we're going into the top five holiday attractions at Lake of the Ozarks. There's a lot going on this time of year and their light displays all over the lake. That's gonna be our number five thing you must do this holiday season at the lake. And the Enchanted Village of Lights, probably the most popular around the lake area and really in mid-Missouri. Their opening night was Thursday. I went through with the girls, phenomenal as always. Sue Huff and her team do a great job. And what's cool, Chris, all those businesses, they sponsor those different uh, displays and those different light fixtures. Yep. And it keeps growing. It's open now through January 1st. It's five to nine Sunday through Thursday, five to 10 Friday and Saturday. Uh, and then also five to 10 Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, and Christmas Day. And the cool thing is this Friday and Saturday, the 24th, uh, is the first Friday and Saturday where the horse-drawn carriages are an option. Oh, wow. And it's so cool driving through there. You know, it's so neat, so pretty. There are so many displays. Just You just got to get up to Lori and go through there because it is definitely worth it, especially if you got crazy family in town and you just want to find something to do with them. That's something to do. Yeah, and while you're in Lori, make sure you stop by Chances are, and see my family, uh, great eating. Speaking of crazy families, right? Yeah, no, no <laughs> doubt. But the Enchanted Village of Lights in Lori, again, open now through January 1st, Sunday through Thursday, 5 to 9, 5 to 10 on Friday and Saturday, uh, and also on Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, and Christmas. And don't forget, Friday and Saturday, starting this weekend, the horse-drawn carriages, other light displays, St. Patrick's Church Festival of Lights. Good. That starts on Friday. The 23rd goes through the 7th of January. But one day in particular, Mark, on your calendar, everybody, Sunday, December 10th, from 4 to 8 at the Shrine, they're going to have the O Holy Night Live Nativity. Ooh, cool. Which will be neat to see. Santa, Carolers, Bonfire, Hot Cocoa, and more. Uh, and that's Sunday, December 10th with the St. Pat's Festival of Lights. And again, that opens on Friday the 23rd, goes all the way through January the 7th. Of course, Versailles Unity of Lights, November 23rd through the 1st of January at Versailles City Park. Osage Beach, Holiday Light Park, December 1st through the 31st. That's at Osage Beach City Park. And one worth mentioning is Camdenton's Christmas on the Square, always a big one, is Saturday, December 2nd this year, 1030 to 1. So that is number five on our list. All of those are just number five. Five the <laughs> different light displays around the lake. We love those. Right. And uh, number four, we're excited about, Chris. Yeah, this is the 39th annual Lake of the Ozark Christmas Parade, and that is Saturday, December the 9th, and uh, starts at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You can see it on Lake TV, but it's it's if you don't want to just stay home and watch it in your living room, it's always fun to get out there and enjoy it, kind of be a part of that. Uh, it's a tradition here at the lake, right? Yeah, lots of, of parades. There's one in Eldon. Of course, there's a light Christmas parade this weekend. We'll also have that on Lake TV. There's big events, but the big one is the Lake Ozark Christmas Parade, like you said, Saturday, December 9th, and it's presented by our friends at Central Ozarks Medical Center. Starts at the Stoplight HH in Bagnell Dam Boulevard, goes all the way along Bagnell Dam. You'll see Santa floats, great music. The Grinch will make an appearance, and as Chris said, if you don't attend, you can watch live on Lake TV with our own Kevin Hilly starting at one o'clock. So that's number four, the big parade. How about number three, the ice at Old Kinderhook? I've never done that. I've never been over there for the ice at Old Kinderhook. I know you have, right? It's pretty cool. Yeah, and, and so just the ice in itself is pretty special. They have a lot of cool stuff there. You go rent skates, you can go take your kids, your friends, your family, sit by the fire. They also have hockey. But for certain weekends and getting ready to start this weekend, I talked with Chris Ayers, who's the general manager with Old Kinderhook. He said, hey, we're hoping to be open this weekend, uh, but it is pretty special because Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, this weekend through December 15th, 16th, and 17th, their Christmas village where they have different characters like Olaf, Santa's going to be there. You can get breakfast with them. And really, the skating is so much fun. Uh, it's a $5 per child to participate in the Christmas Village activities. There's also hay rides on the weekends, which are pretty cool. You decorate cookies. And of course, like I said, you get to see Santa. Now there's some fees involved like skate rental and things of that nature. And they're gonna have some special appearances. So I encourage you to make sure that you go check out Old Kinderhook online as they'll have their full calendar of events. But ice hockey was something so big for my dad growing up. Yeah. And we never really had it down here at the lake until Old Kinderhook had their ice rink, and so it's cool, man. They have all those fires. They've added new TVs inside the trophy room, 
And uh, it makes for a really cool family outing if you get out there and get on the ice. Did you grow up ice skating, doing that? No, because we didn't have it here. The closest right. one was in Jefferson City, but I did grow up rollerblading and playing street hockey all by myself against our garage <laughs> for years and years. Right, yeah. See, now I grew up in Wyoming, so we ice skated every winter. I mean, it was- So you're a hockey guy. Uh, never played hockey. We didn't have just hockey there, just skating around, yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, it, so much so that we actually got ice skates for Christmas some years. Wow, you know, that was a big thing. Yeah, yeah, we got rollerblades. Yeah, it's for Christmas, that was simply the same thing. Right, big deal yeah. for us. We loved yeah. to rollerblade. But yeah, my dad grew up ice skating in, in Buffalo, mm -hmm. Western New York. You yeah. know, they everything would ice over, and that was big for them. So you can relive if you also grew up ice skating at the uh, ice at Old Kinderhook. Again, starts this weekend, weather permitting. Uh, Chris said, hey, it's, it was a little warm, but we're hoping to be ready for this weekend. So check them out on Facebook to confirm whether they're there. But it's every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, now through December 15th, 16th, and 17th. You won't want to miss that. All right. That's number three on the list. Yep. Number two on the list, Chris. Holiday for uh, with the horses, right? Forget me not horse rescue. Yeah. And that's something near and dear to your heart. You've been out there several times. Yeah, such a great organization, the Forget Me Not Horse Rescue and Sanctuary out there in Lynn Creek. Uh, they have an escurium that they've built and really house a lot more horses than they ever had before. And so a couple years ago, they started doing this annual event in Christmas, and there's only two opportunities to do it. It's Sunday, December 3rd, or okay. Saturday, December 16th, from 11 to 3 p.m. And listen, it's out there at the Horse Rescue and Sanctuary off Heritage Road in Lynn Creek, and you get to decorate cookies. You get pictures with Santa. You get the Home Depot Kids Workshop is out there. They do pony rides and sleigh wagon rides, and you get to see Santa in the stables with the horses, and it is just an incredible experience. We went last year, uh, Unique and I took Brindley, and we went with... We saw the Chrismans, uh, they were their kids, and we both said just how amazing that was and we wanna go back this year. Uh, it's worth it, it's very affordable. Uh, it's only $10 a person, kids three and under are free, and if you have a big family, the most you can pay to experience everything is $50. And uh, for the kids that wanna also ride the pony, which we did and it was unbelievable. Yeah. Their staff is so great with the kiddos. It's only $5 to ride the pony, so make sure you mark your calendar. It's Sunday, December 3rd, or Saturday, December 16th from 11 to 3 p.m. That is one of the coolest things you know, to do here this time of year. And so many people love, love, love horses. This is your opportunity, man. Oh, yeah. Get the kids out there, get the wife out there, get the family out there. This is just, that's one of the coolest things going on. Yeah, it is busy as far as all that's going on between the stables and the riding area and Santa and the cookies and the decorating. It's just way cool, so make sure that you guys partake in that. And number one this year, I thought this was cool, Chris. Uh, instead of going out and do something uh, or spending money for an experience, showcase a little selflessness with the family, something like uh, adopt a family, mm -hmm. uh, visit a nursing home maybe, yeah. uh, play some games with someone that may not have family, uh, send thank you cards to first responders, prepare a simple care package for veterans, uh, things like that. Because when you look at Christmas, we get so caught up in the gifts and in the events and the holidays and the bonuses and the parties that you know we can lose sight of what it's all about. And I think that it all kind of points back to, we wanna be generous, we wanna be kind, because what is Christmas about? Well, it's the greatest gift we've ever received. And so I wanted to read a little, uh, a couple of excerpts here from Luke chapter two, verse seven through 16. Um, so Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem to the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Of course, baby Jesus. And for, we celebrate the resurrection on Easter. But for that to happen, for anything to matter, 
this first have to happen, had to happen. And for Christmas season, the true meaning is the birth of our Savior, Jesus. And in that gift that he's given us of salvation and grace that we did not deserve, we can resemble that. We can model that by doing something for others this holiday season that we won't get anything out of necessarily right now, but that's truly what the holiday season is all about. And so this year, I encourage everyone here in the lake area to do something for somebody else out of service and selflessness, and that is the greatest family attraction or tradition you can create this year. Yeah, and if your kids see you doing that, what a great example that is. What a, I mean, that's the best gift you can give your kids this Christmas if they're watching you, their parents, the people they look up to, their heroes doing things like that. How, how incredible is that? That's, a, that's great. I love that. That's fantastic. And some that I thought uh, would be cool, one of, you know, I'm looking at, at that, what would we do in order? And I was thinking, okay, I want to find something that Brinley really wants for Christmas and that she thinks she's going to get. And then I want her, she's only three, but to start installing this, I want to ask her, okay, so you could either buy this or we'll triple it and we can take that money and we can adopt a family. And then you could pick out the toys for them. You could wrap the gifts with us and then we can hand deliver those as a family. But you're right. When your kids see you doing those things and they start to learn that, those things stick. And that's how you raise up good humans that are big difference makers in the world. And so we've been talking about that. We're definitely going to do something like that. But this time of year, that is so important because we do kind of lose sight of what the holiday season is truly about, don't we? Yeah, we really do. And, you know, um, you see it a little bit in those, you know, the lovey-dovey Christmas, you know, movies and stuff. The spirit of Christmas all year round. And that's true, but we don't really live it in our real life. We don't really do it. We like to see it in a, in a movie or something. But it's up to us to actually do those things and teach and show our kids how to do those things. Otherwise, they won't get done.